Today, we are talking with Bernardo Faria about blue belts. That's right, my friends. Today, we are talking with Bernardo Faria about blue belts. I know you've got lots of questions and he's got lots of answers. So it's going to be a very fun process to learn about blue belts from our friend Bernardo Faria. I hope you enjoyed the interview and I hope you learned something. So enjoy the show. Do you have any belt requirements for a blue belt? Man, at, at, at Alliance, Fabio Gurgel, he created a curriculum that uh, he, he, at Alliance, not at Marcelo's, at Alliance. The, the, okay. Marcelo's part of Alliance, but Marcelo does his own things that I, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I mean, like I, and I agree with the, uh, most of the things Marcel does. I agree. And, uh, he, he's a great teacher and super nice guy. So, but, uh, at Alliance, Fabio has an Alliance curriculum and Fabio does belt tests. But, uh, and then there is a huge discussion here. If it's fair or not to do belt tests, this and that, I see people saying yes or no, but whatever. But what I want to mean is at five schools, for one person to go to the blue belt, it requires at least one average of 120 classes. So he has the control. And for example, if the one person did only 50 class in two years, he's not ready to go to the blue belt. So I, I think it's, to follow this exactly as it is, it's not perfect, but to have some idea is good, you know, because you don't want to, maybe the guy trains jiu-jitsu for three years, but he did 20 class. You don't want to give him the blue belt. <laughs> and uh, so it's good to have some idea of like, uh, and uh, sometimes you have like a very packed school as well. And uh, you, you, you don't have the control of exactly who is very tough and who is not very tough and this and that. And you cannot, I think you cannot graduate somebody only because the guy's tough as well or because he's not tough. Some people are not tough, you know, they, 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 they are not tough and they will never be, you know, it's not their style. They, they're just, they are very technical, but they're not tough, you know, so. So I think it's good to have some idea of when you should graduate someone. For example, oh, this guy has around like 100, 130 class or so. Oh, he has a good jiu-jitsu. He know how to do those techniques. Yeah, he's ready to go. Maybe he's not like a super tough guy, but I mean, like he knows jiu-jitsu. And that, that, that's what you want, you know. We want our students knowing jiu-jitsu and doing the best they can, you know. doesn't matter what level they are, you know, we just want to make sure that they know jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu is being good for them, they are learning, they are happy, I think that's the goal. How important is it for students to be able to defend their belt? Yeah, I tap for blue, purple, brown, black, <laughs> white, I don't think I tap, <laughs> but I can't tap, that can happen, why not, you know, but, uh, uh, I think this mentality, like, oh, I'm brown belt, I cannot tap for a blue belt. This is very old mentality. I think if you if you train really hard every day, you know, if you, if in one day I roll with Marcelo, I roll with Mateus, I roll with John, I roll with Munch, I roll with Marcus, man, if I go with one blue belt in the last round, I might be in the deep problem. <laughs> so, I mean, like, I don't care for that, you know. Yeah. I think that's not the thing, you know. I mean, like, if if... I think if you are worried too much about protecting your belt, you stop learning, you know, because you you're gonna stop, you're gonna start selecting through who you're gonna roll. Because oh, I don't want to roll with that guy because maybe he's gonna tap me. That's not jujitsu, you know. You are there to learn, to have fun, and uh, I think you are there exactly for that. You are there to learn, and you are there to have fun. You don't need to worry if you are there to beat people or being beaten. You don't worry about that. Just worry about learning. And just worry about having fun. If you're going to protect your belt or not, who cares, you know? When it comes to promoting somebody to a blue belt, how important is it that they are like a good teammate, they try hard, they help others, those kind of uh, things that aren't necessarily jiu-jitsu related, how important is it that they have those? Man, this is very cool about Marcelo's school. Marcelo is very deep on that. Marcelo, like, uh, if the guy is a bad person, I think he's going to take a very long time to get his belt. <laughs> Because uh, 
bad person we mean like it's very rare that you find someone like that you know but very many times you see guys with like bad attitudes this and that then man marcel holds that guy off you know and it's i think that's the most fair thing you know because man when you give someone a higher belt you are giving this guy power you know it's it's a type of power you know and you don't want to give you power sorry to use this word here guys but to an asshole you know yeah so uh, Marcel is very, very like a good guy, you know, and he want to be, a, he want to have everyone being like a good guy, being good examples as well, you know, and I think that's, that's the way it's, as it should be, you know, imagine like a new students coming to our school and then most of the students are like not nice persons, this and that, and they're all like higher belts and it's not cool. So I, I think the, the attitude should be very important when you consider graduating someone as well. When it comes to uh, giving a blue belt to somebody, have you ever regretted that? Have you ever regretted giving somebody a blue belt? Nah, no. We, we, at Marcel's, there is no belt test. So we we get together, like me, him, Paul, and the, the other instructors nowadays. And uh, we, we take our decisions. You know, sometimes happens that all of us, we are like, oh, I don't know what to do. Let me think. <laughs> that happens, you know. But, uh regret i'm not gonna say you know because if you took the decision you took the decision you know and uh, do you have any advice for a new blue belt for a new blue belt yeah uh if i had to say something would be pretty much what you were saying here like keep your ego low not only in the blue belt on all belts and try to learn as much as you can having fun as much as you can and train as much as you can but don't worry if the white belt's gonna tap you or or you know I mean, like, of course, you should worry about if you're learning well or not. But don't worry if the the guy tapped you or not, because that this is going to stop your learning process. You know. Wow, that that's great advice, and it it's something that uh, I remember as a blue belt. I was worried about, you know, getting caught in the you know, tight triangle by an, by a white belt or something. Oh, I gotta not tap to this, but really, I should be focused on learning. And if maybe uh, some guard pass is ending up to where I get triangled sometimes, I need to work on that and not just oh, throw it away and, and, not, and not work on that. I need to work on uh, with making myself better at jiu-jitsu, not getting, uh, avoiding yeah. getting tapped out by somebody. Well, I mean, like, for example, I'm a black belt, right? So if every day I start getting tapped five times per day by blue and purple, <laughs> and white, I'm going to start getting worried. You know? yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, if it started too often – and the, by guys much lower belts than you, maybe you are doing something wrong. So I would get worried. But yeah. I would definitely not get worried if one blue belt tapped me tomorrow or today, and that happens. Okay, no problem. Can still train anything and for everybody. Well, that wraps up our interview with Bernardo. I hope you enjoyed it. The great news is I've interviewed five other black belts and asked them the same questions about blue belts. We have Tim Sled, Matt Thornton, Dan Koval, Henry Akins, and John Will. All of the links are down below. You can check out their interviews as well. A lot of good stuff, a lot of great content and insight provided by these black belts. Hope you like the video down below, comment as well, and subscribe to the channel to check out more BJJ action.